Hello everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a Minecraft 1.14.1 server so this is a brand new version of minecraft came out today an update and a bug fix from 114 to 1141 i would recommend running all of your servers other than 1.14.1 because 114 was horrible for minecraft servers 1141 seems to be a lot better however first and foremost this is not a 24 hour server this is a server that's only up when your computer is up and running and when you are actively managing it it's using your own computer's resources meaning you need an okay computer to be able to run this computer and minecraft at the same time like if you have issues just playing minecraft if you have to play it on lower settings or use Optifine or something like that to be able to play Minecraft, you're probably not going to be able to run a server while you're playing Minecraft. On top of that, it is, as I said, not a 24-hour server, meaning it is not meant for anybody and everybody. It is hosted on your own local IP address. If someone gets your local IP address, what they can do is actually DDoS you, meaning take you offline by sending tons of data at your internet and just taking it down for as long as basically they want. And they can figure out where you live, even getting latitude and longitude coordinates from your IP address. We'll see that a little later in this video. However, if you do want a server that is up all the time, if you want a server that you can play on, for example, as long as you can play Minecraft, you can play on a Minecraft server. If you want something like that, Apex Minecraft hosting is going to be the one for you. You can check out Apex at the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. And over there, you'll get an incredible 24-hour DDoS victim Minecraft server that you can give to anybody and everybody. And it is hosted on Apex's hardware. All you get is an IP address. You can go and play on it if you can play Minecraft normally. On top of that, you can add plugins to the server, whether it's in 1.14.1 using Paper or Spigot, or whether it's in older versions of Minecraft. If you want to run a mod pack on your server, you can do that with Apex Minecraft hosting absolutely no problem. We actually love Apex so much that we host our own server, play.breakdowncraft.com on them. So if you want, again, the best Minecraft server you can absolutely have, Apex Minecraft hosting is the only place to go. You can check out Apex again at the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex, and thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Nevertheless, what if you're okay with not using Apex? What if you're okay with port forwarding? You don't have to port forward on Apex, you do with this tutorial. Well, let's go ahead and just jump right on into it. So first and foremost, you want to go to this link. This is the second link down below. There's a lot of links down below. Everything up here in the tab bar is linked down below. However, this is the second one down below. And once you're here, you want to come down to where it says download Minecraft. As you can see, this is going to download the Minecraft server file. Not directly, but take us off to Minecraft.net, Mojang's official website right? This is the official website for Minecraft where we can download the server file. As you can see, we can download Minecraft 1.14.1.jar. Right there it is. Click on that and it will download in the bottom left. This is a server.jar. We are safe to keep it as long as it does say server.jar. We can keep the file. Plus, this is downloaded from Minecraft.net, Mojang's official website. Like if you've played Minecraft, you trust Mojang. Nevertheless, if you are on Mozilla Firefox, it's popped up in the center of your screen. You're going to want to click save there. And Google Chrome, we can keep in the bottom left. Now, if we minimize our browser here on the desktop, we do have the server.jar file. You can go ahead and right click, create a new folder and title this folder whatever you want. I'm going to title it play.breakdowncraft.com. Why am I doing that? Because that is our network Minecraft server running 114 grief protected survival. You heard that right. If you're looking for a simple grief protected survival server, play.breakdowncraft.com is the place to go. It is incredible. Player economy set up with jobs and just absolutely incredible stuff. So come play with us play.breakdowncraft.com for native 114 grief protected survival. We're going to take this server jar and drag it into our play.breakdowncraft.com profile. And once it's in here, we want to go ahead and right click, create a new text document. So we're creating a new text document there. You can just leave this title new text document. Then you want to go ahead and open it up. Once you've opened it up, go to the description of this video and you'll find this. These are different, basically, amounts of RAM that you want to add to your server. Now, I would recommend for most 114 servers to have about two gigs of RAM, just in general. Now, you can add more, you can add less. You shouldn't need more than four gigabytes for this server because it's just going to be you and a few of your friends, right? You're not going to make it public because you don't want to give this IP address out to everybody. So for this, I'm just going to use four gigabytes. We can go ahead and copy this. We just need to copy from where it says Java to the end of pause there, and then come over here and paste this in our new text document. Then we need to go file on our new text document, click save as, right like so. And then in this right here, the save as window, we need to name it run.bat, run.bat. Then we need to change the save type as to all files. So run.bat, save type as all files, and then go ahead and click save. Now we can close out of everything here, and we should have this run.bat file. You can delete the new text document that we created. 
Now we want to go ahead and double click on the run.bat file and it should go ahead and download some stuff. It shouldn't download everything. However, if it doesn't download anything, right, if you don't get the eula.txt or the server properties file, what you need to do is go to the description down below and go here. This is downloading Java, specifically the Java development kit. This is required to run a Minecraft server, run Minecraft mods, do all sorts of stuff with Minecraft. So come here, download this. This tutorial walks you through it and then you'll be good to go. If you still double click on the run.bat file and it doesn't work, you just need to repair your jar files and you can do that using the jar fix this is also linked in the description down below and this tutorial walks you through how to use the jar fix it's pretty simple just download a program and run it now if we go ahead and minimize our browser we should have the eula after double clicking on run.bat go ahead and double click on the eula.txt file go to this link right here and then if you agree to everything at that link you go ahead and change eula equals false to eula equals true t-r-u-e exactly like that then go ahead and go file save make sure that is saved there then we can close out of it. Now we can double click on the run.bat file. At this point, it will actually go ahead and start up your server for the first time. It really is that easy to get a server up and running. However, at this point, we still need to port forward. We still need to allow your friends to join it. Right now, you could join it, but nobody else. If you want your friend across the street or across the world to join your server, you're going to need to be able to port forward. Now, if you don't want to port forward, no worries. You can get a server with Apex Minecraft hosting at the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex, to just set up your server in under five minutes without having to port forward. It's a very simple process over there and way easier than what we're doing here. Nevertheless, if you do want to port forward, go ahead and let your server finish starting up when you see done right there see that when it says done you can go ahead and type stop over here in this like black command window and hit enter it'll then go ahead and close out of your server then you'll see press any key to continue where you can press any key and it will close out of that now we need to port forward now don't worry i have helped millions of people port forward so i'm pretty good at like troubleshooting things as time goes on and we have articles to help you port forward and all sorts of stuff like that so let's just go ahead and jump right into it first and foremost you want to click on the little windows icon it's in the top left for me but it's in the bottom left of your screen that little windows icon in the bottom left click on that and then go ahead and type in cmd right like so then you have command prompt here go ahead and click on command prompt and in here you want to type ip c-o-n-f-i-g ip config exactly like that and hit enter now there's a lot of stuff going on here but there's only two numbers that you need okay so you see how all these temporary ipv6 addresses everything like that ignore those you see this ipv4 address that is what we're looking for, that IPv4 address there. So we wanna go ahead, we can open up a, a notepad document if we want to and type that out. You can write it down, but just keep this for later. So this is your IPv4 address here. And we're gonna type this over. So this is 192.168.1.184. Now that's mine, yours might be completely different, right? So whatever yours is, and go ahead and type it out and make sure you label it there, right? That's going to help us port forwarding later to make sure it connects to your server. Now, after that, we need the default gateway. Now, as you can see here, I had two things for my default gateway. I had this big, long string of numbers here, and then I have a much smaller set of numbers. We want to go with the smaller one, the 192.168.1.1 in my case, but for you, it should be all numbers. There should be no letters in it, and it should just be like that. It should be a four number sequence. So in my case, that is going to be 192.168.1.1. Yours may be the same. It might be completely different, but either way, go ahead and copy that over, and that is our default gateway. Now at this point, you can actually go ahead and close out of the command prompt if you want, as long as you have these two numbers written down somewhere. First and foremost, we're gonna take the default gateway here. We're going to copy that and then open up our browser. We're gonna open up a new tab in our browser here. See this brand spanking new tab here? Go ahead and paste that default gateway in your new tab and then hit enter. And then go ahead and open up your router. Now, most likely yours looks completely different from what I've got here. Yours may just be a login box that pops up from the top. It might just be a random page with a login box in the center. It can be all sorts of things. No matter what it is, don't worry. We just need to log into it. How do you do that? Well, you can find your router's password using this link in the description down below. This right here is a link on how to find your router's password. We've helped over 80,000 people do it at this point, and it walks you through all sorts of different methods finding your router's password, all the way down to contacting your ISP, even though I've never heard of someone really getting to that point. At most, all you need to do is usually try the default info and username and password there, which that shows you how to do. So nevertheless, once you've done that, once you've got your router password, we can go ahead and log in to our router. So once I've logged into my router here, we'll be able to port forward. Now port forwarding for you is most likely gonna be completely different from port forwarding for me. However, I'm gonna tell you where to look. I'm gonna tell you the different names to look for. Just look around your router. You can't mess anything up unless you save it. So make sure the only thing you save is the port forward. Then you're good to go. So for me, it's in 
security. For you, it might be an advanced. It might be an advanced advanced. It might be an apps in gaming. It might be in port forwarding slash port triggering. It might be in port triggering slash port forwarding. It might be in NAT gaming. It might be NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It could be all sorts of stuff. So much stuff that we actually have a dedicated article here on how to port forward your router. Now the article's cool, but really what you're focusing on is this right up here at the top. This is our complete guide to port forwarding. It walks through over five routers on how to port forward for them from all different brands, from Netgear to Asus to Linksys. All of it is included here. So come here and watch this video. Even if your specific router isn't on that list, you'll probably find something similar enough and learn enough terms to be able to find it on your router. So it's important you watch that video. However, for me, it is in security. Then again, what could it be? Think about it. It could have been in apps and gaming, right? So guess what? Apps and gaming, right there it is. Then what else could it be? It could be single port forwarding, could be port forwarding, port forwarding slash port triggering. For me, it is single port forwarding right there. See that single port forwarding? Go ahead and click on that. And then in here, you want to add a new single port forward. You might just have a list of like, you know, fields to enter. If that's the case, that's fine. For me, I have to add a new one. Application name, this could also be known as ID or identification. It's going to be just something that you can identify basically this port forward with. In my case, that's going to be Minecraft. The external port, anything to do with port, whether it's external port, internal port, port one, port two, first port, second port, whether it is outside port, inside port, anything to do with port, whatever it is, you're going to enter 25565. Now, what did I just say? Anything to do with port. Remember that, anything. If it says the word port on it, you want to enter 25565. This is asking for an internal port, so we're doing 25565. For protocol, we are going to go both, or we're going to do TCP slash UDP, or UDP slash TCP. Either way, we want to make sure both protocols are selected. For device IP, we need to come back over here and grab our IPv4 address. So in my case, 192.168.1.184. That is my IPv4 address. Yours is going to go right there, most likely different from mine, but enter your IPv4 address in where your device IP. Your device IP could also be called your internal IP or your IP address. Now, most of the time you are done. You can go ahead and click save and click apply. However, some people might need an external IP when they're doing their port forward, or it could also be called an outside IP. Now, if that's the case, leave it up. We're going to go get that. However, pay attention even if you don't need it because you will need it to join your Minecraft server as that is how your friends join your Minecraft server is using your external IP address. So to find that, go to the description down below. There's a link down there to what's my IP and that will take you here. This is our website and it shows you your IP address. If you want to know how we get that, right here it is. Basically every website gets your IP address. We just give it back to you. So nevertheless, once you're here, you can go ahead and copy this IP address from here. Now, on my screen, it's blacked out. All you can see is the last three numbers of it. And the reason for that is because I want to be safe, right? You don't want to give this out to anybody and everybody. I'm making a public video. I don't want to give this out to anybody and everybody. So because of that, I am blaring this out. If you do want a public server, again, Apex Minecraft hosting is the way to go. The breakdown of XYZ slash Apex, first link down below. However, you can see the information that someone can get from your IP address, Latin longitude coordinates, city, region, all of that is available there. All of that can be seen from your IP address. So it is very, very important to keep this private. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. Now we can come back over to the port forward here. And if we want to and needed it, we can paste in this external IP. Otherwise we can go ahead and open up Minecraft 1.14. Now we also need to go ahead and run our server by double clicking on the run.bat file that I go ahead and open up. And now I'm gonna open up Minecraft as well. So as your server is starting in the background, you can go ahead and open up Minecraft and get that running. I'm gonna be running 1.14.1, as you can see, 1.14.1 there. Go ahead and click on play and it will open up 1.14.1 and get things rocking and rolling. So one of the things I will say that even with the new 1.14.1 update, it fixed a ton of stuff with Minecraft servers. However, spawn time is still a little older, like longer than old servers, right? I mean, as you can see, it takes a little while longer still to get everything set up. However, it's not generating the end and everything like it was before. 1.14 was really weird for servers. 1.14.1 seems to be a lot better. But once we're in game here, we want to go ahead and click on multiplayer. And what's that? The best Minecraft server in the multiverse? Yes, play.breakdowncraft.com. The, the red X's are because we're not allowing 1.14.1 clients in, even though we will by the time you're watching this video. But nevertheless, we can then go ahead and click direct connect. Once we're here, we can go ahead and paste the public IP address. Again, you can only see the last three numbers. That's just so you can go back if you want and compare this IP address to that IP address. It's the same IP address, but you can only see the last three numbers because again, you wanna keep this private. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and click join server. You'll see it pop up over here that I am joining in the game. We will up ourselves and then I'll tell you what to do. If let's say the server doesn't work or the 
there's all sorts of issues or anything like that. Now, on the first connection to a server, it might take a while. That's going to be for you. That's going to be for your friends. It's going to be for anybody. It is going to take a while on your first server connection. Now, there is one thing that we could do if this doesn't connect that you could do. Now, typically you don't have to, but I'm actually hoping this fails out and it did. So if you get this fail out, what do you do? First and foremost, stop your server. Don't freak out though. It's okay. Stop your server, go back to your server file over here, right? your server folder, double click on server.properties, you see that? And then once you open this up, you might need to select to open it with text edit. If you do, just go ahead and open it with notepad, text edit, whatever you have, go ahead and open that. And then you wanna find a server IP. See this server IP? Next to server IP, enter your IPv4 address. In my case, that's gonna be 192.168.1.184. Your IPv4 address is going to be different, so whatever it is, enter it next to server IP. Then go ahead and do file, save. Now we will need to restart the server. Every time you make changes on your server, you're gonna have to stop it and restart it. That's just standard. I mean, any server out there really is going to do that. There are some ways to do some live updates with plugins, but for a vanilla server like this, not gonna happen. By the way, if you do want a server with plugins, I have a video coming up on that, so be sure to subscribe to the channel for those awesome kind of videos. Nevertheless, once this is started up, we can go ahead and join on in again. There we go, we've started up. Direct connect, same IP address, right? Last three numbers are the same join server. This time it will let us in. We'll see it pop up over here. Now, the reason it did that is we didn't define where it should send it. Basically, we were connecting to the IP address and it was like, what, what, what do you want me to do with this? I don't know what to do with this. But now it does know what to do with it and we'll be able to see, there we go, we are loading on into the server. So as we can see, my username, Nick King, loaded in and whoa, we spawned right and that is a good 1.14 spawn. Wow. All right. Here, let's go ahead and op ourselves and then I'll give you the seed and then I'll tell you how to troubleshoot some issues. So first and foremost, to op yourself, go over here to this console, type OP and then your username. In my case, that is Nick King. Then you might not have known this, but if you're ever curious about the seed of a Minecraft world, as long as it's not like a public server, because those are usually blocked on seed. But if it's like your server and you have op, you can do slash seed and hit enter and boom, there is the seed for this Minecraft world, something you may have needed. Nevertheless, with that, we can go ahead and talk about some issues. So if you've tried to join your server and it's just waiting and waiting and waiting and not loading and not working and oh my God, what do you do? Well, it's most likely a firewall. Whether it is on your router or on your computer just depends on whatever you have, right? If you have an antivirus, it could be the antivirus. If it is your router, make sure that you are turning off your firewall protections and allowing port forwards on your router. Whoa, there's like a, is this like a cave in the, okay, this is a cool seed. I would love to see somebody play this, but nevertheless, that is how you can actually fix that issue is just by turning off your firewall or antivirus. Those are most likely where the issues are coming from. However, if you are still having issues, right? If you've tried that and you're still having issues, make sure your port forward is correct. That is usually where most issues lie and where they can be fixed. Even I make mistakes, like I recorded this video a few minutes ago and the last time I recorded it, I didn't actually enter the port forward. I didn't apply it. And that alone, you know, messed the server up, wouldn't allow me to join it. So that is a very, very key. Your friends are gonna join off of your public IP address. So make sure you give that to them. And um, yeah, overall, that is how you can set up a server in Minecraft 1.14.1. If you do have any questions, if you do have any issues, let me know in the comment section down below. Come play with us on our native Minecraft 1.14.1 Grief Protected Survival Server. Play.breakdowncraft.com is the IP. I can't wait to see you online. Also, if you wanna set up your own server in just a few clicks, Apex Minecraft Hosting is the way to go. You can check out Apex link at the first link down below, thebreakdown.xyz slash Apex. Nevertheless, my name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Thank you so, so much for watching. Hope you you enjoyed the video and I am out. Peace.